Guys, I want to talk about low superheat and what causes that. And we're not talking about a low target superheat, we're talking about a low superheat caused by another issue. Uh, one of the main issues is airflow. If you have a lack of airflow, the refrigerant in your evaporator coil will not be allowed to boil and gain the superheat that it normally would have. Meaning, you have a piston, a TXV, electronic expansion valve allowing a certain amount of refrigerant into your coil. Now it enters the coil and it's got liquid in it and it's you know turning to gas as well. Now if you have no air moving across the coil that refrigerant isn't allowed to warm and start to boil and if it doesn't start to boil off it remains in liquid state longer and your superheat will be lower. Just imagine if you have a coil where you have let's say you're getting 400 CFM and you need 800 well that's a big difference in the amount of heat that refrigerant can take on. So you might be looking for a target superheat of 20 or 25 and getting 5 degrees of superheat. Meaning during conditions where you had a target of 10, you start to have a flooded coil and get flooded back to the compressor. You could cause damage to the compressor. Airflow restrictions can be just improper system installation, blocked filter, blocked coil, any sort of blockage in the ductwork, crushed ductwork, wrong size ductwork. There's big issues a lot of times you'll have a a return is too small and it kind of strangles the system and it's not always so pronounced that you have freezing up which can occur uh, if your refrigerant pressure drops low enough because the temperature is low enough on the coil to do so because it's not getting enough air across it you won't get any superheat and you will have a low suction pressure as well now if you have an overcharge you'll flood the coil with excess refrigerant have a low superheat and have a high suction pressure because basically the machine is overfilled. Imagine, like anything else, it's hard to evaporate if you have very close molecular space. Meaning, if you imagine all these objects, even the air has a certain temperature. And it's, temperature is created just by molecular motion. The hotter it is, the faster the stuff moves. It's just a whole bunch of stuff in the air moving very quickly. Now if you crowd the coil with refrigerant, the space has become very tight and it's not able to evaporate then you don't get any superheat. This can also be caused by a failed metering device like a TXV that is failed open and floods the coil with refrigerant. You could have a very low superheat, a high suction pressure, and you won't get much cooling out of it because your cooling comes from that change of state. You gotta get that liquid to change into gas to cool the air and have the refrigerant take on that heat. Because basically, basically when it evaporates, it takes on that heat out of the air. And if it's not allowed to do that, either because you've flooded the coil with liquid refrigerant because it's overcharged or for whatever reason you won't get the amount of cooling you need and it'll cost more to run the machine because if you're overcharged obviously your head pressure is higher your compressor amps are higher the machine's going to run longer because the heat transfer isn't there there's a whole lot of reasons but that's a couple reasons why you can have low superheat and what to look for if you're getting that low superheat reading most of the time it's airflow uh, of course it can be overcharged as well but a lot of times airflow is the issue